and itself will put all of your joints out of, out of place. All of your joints, I guess you could say, would be out of joint. Your shoulders, your hands, which were nailed, your feet, and, and, and everybody knows how uh, you actually had to push up on the cross to inhale, and then you had to let your body droop to exhale. It, you, even your back was being rubbed against that rugged cross. And so what he is saying is that this crucifixion is tearing my body apart. And that word, remember, can mean that he was saying, Lord, when you enter into your kingdom, remember me. In other words, put me back together. The other thing is the most likely statement, and that is when you enter into your kingdom, don't forget about me. And that's something about Jesus. He, he won't forget you like the folks in this world. You, I'm, I'm sure I know someone like this. You probably know someone like this. You know, you grew up in the hood and everything was the same. Everybody was everybody. And someone was able to make it up the ladder. And, and now today, if we saw them, they would even pretend that they don't remember us. Your face looks familiar, but I don't know you. You, you even use that old name that they used to have in the street. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry, bro. I can't remember. They get caught up in so much of their success, they cannot remember anybody that they used to know. So he's saying, Lord, when you enter into your kingdom, don't forget about me. Don't don't do like the official in Egypt who forgot about Joseph. When you enter into your kingdom, remember me. The Bible says that the Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. He will not leave you in the hands of the enemy. Matter of fact, Psalm 68 says, Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts among men. Yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among you. And when Jesus saw this faith, you know, uh, the plan of salvation in the simple form says, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus. What is the first thing he said? Lord, when you enter into your kingdom, he confessed with his mouth that Jesus is Lord. Then the Bible says, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Now, you got to see that that was definitely faith for him to want to ask that he would be remembered when Jesus went into his kingdom. What kingdom? Man, all three of us are being crucified on the cross. What kingdom are you talking about? Some people uh, don't have much more longer to live and they, they, they are caught up and to a point of life where it may be days, it may be months. They ask one man, does he invest in the future and the man was so old, he said, son, at my age, I don't even buy green bananas. <laughs> One thing about it, it is appointed for man once to die and then after death, the judgment. But this man not only confessed with his mouth the Lord Jesus, he also believed in his heart that God would raise him from the dead. There was still a future even on the cross. That takes me to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, where the Lord says, and I know that the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans not to hurt or to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. That's what God wants to do for me. That's 
what God wants to do for you. Yes, I'm the preacher man, but I've been written off many times. Matter of fact, when I was growing up in Alexandria, I was known as the black sheep of the family. Huh? My name is Jeffrey Johnson, but my dad sometimes would call me Jacob. Because Jacob was a shyster. Jacob was a uh, trickster. Jacob knew how to fix it up. And you see, I would do things like my parents would call on the phone and they said, Jeffrey, we want you to do the dishes and we want Deborah to sweep the floor and we want John to mop the floor. So when they got home, I told them mom called and said, well, what did mom say? And I would say, uh, uh, Deborah, she wants you to do the dishes and John, she wants you to sweep and mop the floor. You notice I left myself all out of the equation all together. So you can be the one that people would least expect to do well, but God has never wrote you all. Matter of fact, God still loves you and has the ultimate plan for your life. Well, Reverend, you just said that to make us feel good. No, I'm not. The worst of the apostles was a man by the name of Saul, but God met him on the road to Damascus and changed his name to Paul. And he was the least of the apostles, but became the greatest of the apostles. Because Paul would be able to say that I reckon that the sufferings of this present age are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. And Paul had so much confidence, he could say at the time of death that I fought a good fight, I kept the faith, I have finished my course. Henceforth is laid up to be a crown of righteousness. It's hard for us to believe, but keep in mind that there was a young man who was cut from his high school basketball team. But not only did he continue playing basketball, he won more than five championships, and his name is Michael Jordan. There was a woman who was told that she should get out of journalism because she wasn't going to make it because she had the wrong personality. She had the wrong skill sets. But she kept on telling the news. And today we know her as Oprah Winfrey. You may be the smallest. You may be the least intelligent. You may be the one that no one would ever say that you would amount to anything but God. God would have you to know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so this man, this thief, this robber, this malcontent, he believed, he confessed, he was redeemed. Jesus said to him, this day shall thou be with me in paradise. He made it, but he made it by the skin of Jesus' nails. By the skin of his nails. Now, I took, I guess, a play on words that I, I used because this actually comes from a phrase that is used all throughout Western civilization, we call it making it by the skin of your teeth. Now, because of tonight's traffic, I make it here, but by the skin of my teeth. I had just walked in the door, y'all already were ready for the chapel service, but I made it, but I made it by the skin of my teeth. That phrase was used by Job. Job had said in the Old Testament that he was able to be saved but by the skin of his teeth, which means that I barely made it. I nearly failed, but God. You ever drive a car and 
you saw the light turn from yellow to red, and you was able to make it through the intersection, but you barely made it. And then what is so amazing is that the car behind you, they go through the intersection as well. Now, if I barely made it, how did they get through? Now, I can tell you, you can do that even here in Washington, even though they got those uh, red camera lights now. You can make it through the intersection here, but we will not make it through the intersection of eternity because the scripture says that if the righteous scarcely make it, where shall the unjust be? And don't think it's just people from the other side of town. Don't think it's the people who did not go to college. Don't think it's the folks who don't have six-figure incomes. Those are the ones who are righteous. No, the righteous, the preacher, the deacon, the deaconess, the trustee, the choir member, all of us will only scarcely make it. Paul knew that as well. He said, the good that I would do, I do not, but the evil that I would not, that I do, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. So when I do that which I would not, is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. That's why in life, you should never be intimidated by anybody. Because they're just dust. You said, Reverend, I've met some impressive people. I've, I've met some highly educated people. I've, I've met people that went to college early and got their bachelor's, went on and got their master's, and then received their doctorate. That's good. That just means that they're educated us. So, I know some people who are really making big money. They got bank going to big. They got more money in their pocket than we probably have in our checking and savings account. Well, I'm happy for them. Wonderful. But that's just wealthy dust. Remember when I went to school, there was this girl who looked so good, man, I'm telling you, she was like uh, a rack of ribs, some french fried potatoes, and a bag of chips. <laughs> I'd like to be her myself. But she's just good looking dust. <laughs> We were all made from the dust of the ground. And sometimes this dust doesn't want anything to do with that dust. And the problem in America is that white dust don't want nothing to do with black dust. And you have foreigners coming to the country and those who are natives to this country are, 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 don't want anything to do with immigrant dust. But we were all made the same way from dust. And the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now this is my last point. Some people feel that, brethren, I'm going to come to the Lord, but I'm not going to be like the hypocrites. When I come to the Lord, I'm going to have it all together. That means that you ain't coming. Because I can't get it together, and you can't get it together. Saying that I'm going to get it together spiritually and biblically and religiously before you come to Christ is like falling down three flights of stairs and say, I'm going to get it together before I go to the hospital. You need someone to come and get you. They call them paramedics. You need them to come and get you before you hurt yourself even more. That's how it is with Christianity. Come to Jesus before you hurt yourself even more. There's a song that I love that the Winans used to sing. Some of y'all know about that family group called the Winans. The song says, you told me that you loved me. And I should make up my mind. I failed you so much now. And I may keep wasting time. 
using the same excuse that I am just a man. But you tell me that you've been there and you stretch out your nail-starred hand so I can see. Now I know that I am free. And I'm running back to you. I see you standing there for me. Your arms are open wide. And I don't have to cry anymore. My first call was in 1965, Dr. Dr. Merkel. And Sometimes I couldn't get her to start. Not once in those years, those were some wonderful years driving that car, but not once in the years that I owned that car did I ever say, I'm going to fix this car and then take it to the garage. <laughs> if I could fix it myself, there's no need to go to the garage. Someone here tonight is saying that I'm going to get myself together and then I'm going to go to church. And I won't be like those hypocrites. I'm going to be real. Well, let me tell you something. Not all hypocrites are hypocrites. Some hypocrites are people who try and they mess up. But salvation is not based upon us being perfect. Salvation is based upon Jesus being good. You're not saved by the good things you do for God. You're saved by the good thing that God has done for you. And just like that thief on the cross, Jesus died for your sins that you might have new life. Somebody give God glory. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask everyone to my right from the front all the way to the back that if you know Jesus as Lord, just raise your hand. If you know Jesus as Lord, amen. Amen. Everyone to my left, do the same. If you know Jesus as Lord, amen. Put your hands together. Let's celebrate new life. For therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now, if you were able to raise your hand, the only thing you have to concentrate on now is spiritual maturity, to grow and mature in Christ. Uh, I can't think of a team, but um, Golden State was playing a team the other day. I think, yeah, it was the same day. San Antonio Spurs. They got a young boy. Tall. Yeah, tall. Over six feet tall. Close to seven feet tall. He's seven foot? He was a bad boy. But guess what? San Antonio lost. That athlete, as awesome as he is, he still needs to grow and mature in the game. They're not going to be able to push him around for long. They're not going to be able to keep him from dominating for long. They're not going to keep him from owning the center of the court for, for long. He might be a pup now. He may be somewhat weak now, but give him a little time. He's going to be as awesome as Bill Russell. That's where we are right now. Behold, what manner of love God has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. The love, now, we are the sons of God, but it does not yet appear what we shall be. But one day, we shall be like Jesus, for when he appears, we shall see him as he is. We're going to give closing prayer, and then we're going to ask that if you were not able to raise your hand, if you would talk to me or 
one of the chaplains or directors here at the Central Union Mission. Know that God loves you and has the ultimate plan for your life. Know that our sins have separated us from God. Know that Jesus is the only provision for salvation. And know that you must accept Jesus for yourself. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we come. We thank you for the Central Union Mission. We thank you for all of the directors. We thank you for all of the chaplains. And we ask that you will be replicated in this place. We will not be satisfied until every man in this mission has new life in Jesus Christ. We pray that you would work on that person's heart, draw them to you, save them and fill them with your Holy Spirit, and then, Lord God, let them grow and mature to the faith that they can help us bring others to Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let the people of God, let the men of God say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. All right, all right. How you doing, sir? Good. All right, good to see you. Your name? McAllister. McAllister. One of the preachers who preached for our seven last words, his name was Everett McAllister. Yeah, maybe family. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> no, where, where are your family from? From D.C., basically. I'm going to ask him. Uh, North Carolina would be where my father came from. Okay. But the family would be too great. Well, I'm going to talk to him. It's like McAllister's down there. Yeah. I can't wait. But if y'all related, you'll probably give you and me some lunch. <laughs> He's a good guy. I'm going to tell him I met you. Okay. Take care, Brother McAllister. You too. Have a good one. All right. Hey, man. Your, your name again? All right. My mother's maiden name was John. Yeah. We may be related to All right. Yes. Yes. All right, all right. That's in you, man. All right. You got that word. <laughs> all right, sir. How you doing? Oh, my blessed. Good to see you again. It's nice seeing you again. All right, all right. You have a blessed song. Come on. All right. Next time. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. All right, man. Thank you for recording for me tonight. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Kind of also is a senior, I really like what you do. All right, how you been doing? Great, how you been? All right, all right. Sounds like it, yeah. You been eating fish lately? Yeah, yeah, matter of fact, uh, at Reverend Stanley's church, they had fish for us last Friday. Oh, I didn't know that, yeah. yeah. I don't know, he wow. never mentions that. Meet, He's got a lot of love for what he loves, you know what I mean? All right. You can't get away with that. What's up, man? All right. I like your shot, your, your top here, man. Yeah, that's sharp. All right. Yes, indeed. Oh, all right. All right. But uh, I know there's some cowboy fans up in here, but I thought I'd come in and shake them up, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing else to do. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, you know, we recruited some people from the Cowboys to play for, uh, they call them the Commanders now, but I still call them the Reds. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to suit up yourself. You saw what Doug Williams did. Doug Williams and I are 74. Man, you're 74? Yeah, I'm 74. Right. You don't look no 74. Yeah. Give me your full name. Greg Lilly. Gregory Lilly. Uh -huh. Man. Uh -huh. Really? Uh -huh. You getting around better than me. Uh -huh. You getting around better than me. I don't know. Well, there's a man by the name of Gilbert Jones. When you start talking about politics now, he's how old is Brother Jones? I think he's 93, he'll be 94 in June. But when you start talking about politics, man, he gets all charged up. Yeah. I'm not sure. I know he works in the military. 
And he had a successful military career as a worked as a contractor at the Peace. And uh, I remember when we celebrated his 90th birthday and he told us, no, I'm not celebrating my 90th birthday. He said, I'm celebrating my 30th birthday for the third time. <laughs> Well, you know, she was a Johnson, even though I was already a Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Raymond Johnson, uh, Margaret Johnson, called Aunt May. And there was a big pastor down there by the name of Reverend Taylor. Check it out. Uh, uh, and, 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 and remember the, uh, uh, right. Be sure. 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 Be sure
That's right. That's right. <laughs> Tappahannock is beautiful too. Cause you know, I, I I never heard them talk about the oyster cannery, even though some of them harvested oysters. But they talked to me about the tomato cannery where they used to can tomatoes. Yeah. I went, I went off the water. So that's what the cannery is. It used to be. Back in the day, God wants to see. Don't want to call them off the shop. All right, yeah. Reverend Hattie Wilbur. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and they used to have the uh, factory <laughs> down there that made Levi jeans. Oh, yeah, that, that's my job. Oh, ha, ha, ha. like talking to family, talking to you, Brother Lily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Well, I'm going to give you an update next month. Okay. All right, Dad. I look forward to it. All right, God bless you. You have a good night. You too. All right. All right. Why not get on down the road? But thank you for recording tonight. How is how how is uh, your month been? A month.